Just as with other tasks having to do with files, the new file system in Java 7 makes reading and writing text files much easier than it was before. I'll demonstrate this using an existing project called Reading and Writing. This project has one existing file that I'll be working with, lorem-ipsum.txt, and a backup just in case I mess up. And within the code, there are two path objects already defined, one pointing to the existing lorem-ipsum file and one pointing to a file that I'll be creating during the exercise. In order to work with text files using the new file system, you have to define an object known as a character set. It's represented as a class named carset, C-H-A-R-S-E-T. This new class is a member of the new package java.nio and then a sub-package called carset. I'll instantiate the class and I'll name the new object carset with a lowercase c and I'll get its reference from carset.forName and I'll pass in a string representing the character set I want to work with. I'll use us-ascii. You can find other valid strings in the documentation for the carset class. Now it's time to create an instance of the buffered reader class. The buffered reader class is the same one that was used in previous versions of Java. But now you can get a reference to the reader by calling a method of the files class. I'm going to put all this new code into a try catch block. I'll expand my editor to make this code a little bit easier to read. And before I fill in the code for the try block, I'll put a pair of parentheses after the try because I want to create some resources that will be cleaned up automatically. And I'll create a new instance of the buffered reader class. I'll be sure to add an import statement for the class by pressing control space. I'll name the new object reader and I'll get its reference from the new files class. Once again, I'll make sure I have an import and then I'll call the files classes static new buffered reader method. The new buffered reader method requires a source pointing to the path object I want to read and a character set which I've already defined. I don't need any semicolons after that statement. When you put a single Java statement within the parentheses after a try command you don't need the semicolon although if you like you can put one in. Now I'm ready to read the file. Before the try command I'm going to define an array list to contain the contents of the file. I'll create an array list and I'll set its data type of the objects it contains to string. I'll name it lines and I'll instantiate it with its constructor method. Now within the try block I'll define a string object and set it initially to null. Then I'll create a while loop. Of the three while loop templates, I'm going to choose the third one, while loop with condition. And I'll set my condition to the following. Open paren line equals reader dot read line. If that expression succeeds, read line will return a string to the line variable. If it doesn't, the entire expression will result in a null value. So my condition is if read line returns a value, assign it to the line. If it doesn't, that means it's null and jump out of the while loop. Now within the while loop, I'll give myself a little bit of feedback using system.out.println and I'll output the line I just got, but I'll also store the line by adding it to my array list. lines.add and I'll pass in line. So I'm building an array list of strings that I'll be able to use to write to a file later on. For my catch block, I'll change from exception to IO exception. And within the catch block, I'll use system out and I'll output the error message. I'm not expecting any error messages in this demonstration, but because the reader might throw the exception, I'm going to catch it appropriately. I'll save and run the code, and everything seems to work fine. The console output shows that I'm successfully reading the contents of the file and outputting it to the screen. So now I'm ready to write that content to a new file. I already have a path object called target that points to the file that I want to write to. So I'll move down to the bottom of the existing code. 
Just like we did with a buffered reader, I'm now going to use an instance of a class called buffered writer to write content to a new file. I'll start with a try command. Just as with the reading process, I'll put a pair of parentheses after the try, and this is where I'll instantiate my writer object. I'll type the name of the class and press control space to add the import up at the top. I'll name the object writer, and just as I did with the reader, I'll get the reference to the writer using the files class, and this time I'll call a method called new buffered writer. I'll pass in my target object, and I'll pass in my character set. And in this case, I don't need any options. Now within the try block, I'm going to loop through the array list. To do that, I'll create an instance of the iterator class. I'll set its data type to string, and I'll name it iterator. And I'll get its reference from lines.iterator. And this will allow me to easily loop through the array list. Now, I'll execute a while command. And for the condition, I'll use iterator.hasNext. And within the loop, first I'll create a string which will be referenced from the next object in the array list using string s equals iterator.next. Now, I'll call the writer object's append method. The buffered writer has both a write method and an append method, but if you use the write method, you're writing the contents of the file from scratch, deleting anything that's already there. If you append, you'll create the file if nothing's there, and then the next time you call the append method, you'll add the content to the end of the file. I'll be passing in the string, a starting index of 0, and an ending index of s.length, the length of the string that I'm writing. And then I'll explicitly add a new line character using the method writer.newLine. The buffered writer already knows the nature of the file system it's working on, so I don't have to figure out whether I need a carriage return and a line feed or just a line feed. That will all be handled for me by calling this method. Then finally, I'll copy and paste my output of an error message, and I'll put it into this catch block. And I should now be ready to test all of the code. At the beginning of the code, I'm reading the content of an existing file. Then I'm taking that content and writing it out to a brand new file. The locations of both files are defined in these two path objects, source and target. So here we go. I'll run the code. Everything seems to work. I don't get any exceptions. I'll go to my package explorer, and I'll refresh. And there's my new file, and it contains the content that came from the original file. So in this demonstration, I've showed that you can read and write the content of text files using a lot less code and a lot simpler code than was needed in previous versions of Java. As with all of these features of Java 7, you must have the actual Java 7 developer's kit to do this sort of coding. If you're working in Android, these tools aren't available yet as of the time of this recording, but hopefully they'll come to the Java developer's kit in the future.